So my cousin's awesome and I'm glad she's here. She grew up in hell, you know? Hellish environment, just like I did. Hers was even worse. But she at least had, you know, siblings, whereas I had nothing. I had nobody else alone. Um, I'm glad she's here. I'm glad she's not one of those ignorant people who would just be on my mom's side against me and whatnot. No, she sees it. She sees it. She sees what I see. I showed her the pictures of, um, I said, I showed her, you know, we're trying to get caught up on 20, over 20 years, not easy, but I'm like, this is what I looked like in 2001 when I first moved in with Donald in California. And she goes, she goes, was that the, the abuser? I'm like, yeah, he put on a ton of weight, and so did I, but, you know, he would still put me down left and right for my weight gain. I said, and this is what I looked like in 2008 after he nearly killed me and didn't care. A sociopath or psychopath that, you know, that doesn't actually kill anybody or wind up in jail just like your daddy. No, her daddy makes my daddy look like a saint because at least my daddy... You know, he never physically or sexually touched me, and he, you know, he he has redeeming qualities. He accepted that African American kid as his own, even though it cl clearly the guy, the kid clearly was not his own, and his wife, you know, had cheated on him. My dad's wife that he had cheated on my mom with when had cheated on him with a African American, but at least, and my father also, you know, quit drinking and has been sober now for over 20 years, so, um, just as an aside, as I've already told you, mental illness runs in my mother's side of the family, um, and like I was talking to my cousin, so does, so does cancer, and, and, you know, I don't know, but, and alcoholism runs on my father's side, <laughs> and I can laugh, because I just don't give a fuck, you know, like I said, for all I know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm just about at a third of a million video views between my three channels. And I could have more than one psychopath or what, stalking me or trying to figure out how he can, and usually as a he and not a she, he can harm me somehow or find me or whatnot, you know. So I live that reality every day. So you can't, it's like, just like, um, Muse says, you know, we should never be afraid to die, because this world's fucked. And I say, fuck you to all the evil people out there, the psychopaths and the serial killers and the mafia and all. I say, fuck you. Fuck you. Seriously, fuck you. I'm not afraid of you. You say, oh, she's just saying that. Yeah, because just like I saw in Drew Neffman, what Alan was trying to teach Jake, you know, courage is not the absence of fear, it's acting despite the fear, okay? So sure, I'm human, I'm afraid of everything, but at the deepest level of my gut, I say, fuck you to all the evil people on this planet. I say, fuck you, you pieces of worthless crap. You don't know what I either, even if I don't know it, I know what I believe. I know what I believe. I'm not going to live in fear of you, any of you. I refuse to. Absolutely refuse to live in fear of the evil pieces of shit on this planet who are just taking up space. I'm referring, of course, to to anyone, you know, the anyone who's evil, any of the, the killers, the serial killers, the psychopaths, the sociopaths, the, you know, 
the people who only give a shit about themselves. The various world leaders, past, long dead, gone, and present, and whatnot, who are evil pieces of shit who murder left and right, and whatnot. To all of you, I say, fuck you. Fuck you. It's a simple fuck you. I also say it to other so called professionals in my mom's life, including Cheryl. That she betrayed me in the worst way. She didn't care to make sure that Marion knew the truth of what I had gone through and what I had done for my mother in those eight days of hell, okay? And my mother's psychologist writing that bullshit letter for her, saying she was hospitalized. It doesn't even have the facts straight in it. Saying she was hospitalized last month doing it to an uneven through medication. It, it can, doesn't, don't you see how it leaves out the fact she wasn't hospitalized last month. She was hospitalized in February. Okay? In February. All the way she she got out last month. He's such a fucking idiot. He just likes her. She, her attendance to therapy and whatnot. Yeah. She, she tells you what she wants you to know. She doesn't tell you the truth. She would come home. My psychologist says, I'm not crazy. My psych, I don't ever call my mother crazy. You, she's like, you think I'm crazy? You, you know, you, you want me to just think you're totally 100% fine and perfectly fine and competent. You just want me to go along like everybody else and I'm not going to do it. I'm going to walk away. I don't care if you get a million dollars. I've never cared about money, mama. I'm not going to take another penny from her. And I didn't take, you know, she she wanted me to have the 400 for my, my contact lens and see how that's it. I don't want anything else from her. Not, no. All we do is fight. And we fight because I'm right and she's wrong and all the professionals in her life are wrong. She's like, that's really arrogant, Laura. I don't care. They don't live with her. I don't care. Do you think I care that she'll sit there and say, I say, I, I can't stand your site, your social worker. She just, and, and she, well, she can't stand you either because you upset me. My mother's this real nice, sweet person. They all love her. They don't, you know, they're not gonna, they, they, they're, they're proud of her and they want her to feel independent. They're gonna give her the pat on the back to go buy a car. Let them. Let them. I'm gonna tell Cheryl off. Be like, fuck you. Seriously, fuck you. My conscience will be clear. Because all you people sat back and watched while my mother did something that I knew deep down in my very soul she should not do. Okay? I'm the bad guy. I'm always the bad guy. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. She's got this fucking letter now. She's golden. She's golden. I wanted to start screaming at the top of my lungs when she read that letter to me the first night I'm back here to see my cousin. I got, I became enraged. I was up getting upset and me and my cousin wound up going and staying up until three in the morning talking. We didn't talk mostly about my mom. We talked about our lives and past and whatnot, but you know what I mean? But my mom went to bed because I don't want to hear your fucking bullshit letter or your psychologist doesn't even have the facts straight. She was not hospitalized last month. She got out last month, you incompetent twit. You incompetent twit. And then Cheryl, acting like I'm wrong to be upset that she didn't make sure that she and Mary let Mary in no, in no uncertain terms because, remember, Mary and I have been believing this for months. The minute Mary found out about it, she called my mom out. My mom found the house and called my mom, screamed and yelled and said that I did it. My mom can't remember, so my mom even had the nerve to say to me on the phone, well, I don't know who did it. I don't remember. You know? So fuck you, mom. You're asking me today, what did I ever do to you? She sees these pictures. I don't like seeing those pictures because I have them up there because I showed my cousin of you with the bruises. I'm like, yeah, because you don't like the truth, Mom, especially when it comes to you. She's like, you're right, I don't. She's loving it. She's on her high horse. They're not, they're going to sit back and let her buy a car with, oh, with a pat on the back. Good for you, Samantha. You're doing so well. She got out last month, you incompetent twit psychologist who's the worst of the bunch. Because he's the one, remember, who blew me off, treated me like I was a little girl tattling on my mother. And then the police did the same. They followed suit. They called him. And he, they called him. And how they treated me afterwards, what he said to them, oh, my God, I want to fucking put a bullet.
going through my head. I know what he said. I know what they were saying to me. Can you guys learn? Did you and your mom just learn to get along? And of course, my mom was loving it. She was loving it. They didn't take, not only did they didn't take her away, they were on her side that I'm just being mean to her. Can you guys learn to just, I just can't believe what the shit I have to go through. I'm walking away and don't care if my mother becomes a billionaire. I don't want a penny from her. I'm done with this shit. Can you guys just learn to get along? They looked right at me after they talked to him, okay? First they did a physics test. We don't think there's anything wrong with you, Mom. If we take her away, it's kidnapping. They, they talked to him, and then you should have seen how they treated me. I know what he was saying to her. Oh, she's, Lord, the daughter's mentally ill, and the daughter, the, you know, she yells at her mother all the time. There's nothing wrong with Samantha. She's, she's a, she gets comfy. You know what I mean? It was all bullshit. And now he has egg on his face, okay? Because eight days after I went through eight days of hell, it was found, she just got worse and worse and worse, you know? He's going to write this bullshit letter. She was hospitalized last month. He doesn't even have the facts straight. She got out last month. She was hospitalized last month. You ain't got to it. She was hospitalized in February and got out. In June. I just can't believe this shit. I can't believe it. That's why I snuck and copied her fucking letter. I can I didn't, I, I know what it said anyway. But I'm going to send a letter to Cheryl and be like, you know what, fuck you. Seriously, fuck all you so-called professionals. You're going to sit back and watch my mother do what she sh I know in my deep down in my very soul based on living with her daily, seeing how she forgets things constantly, seeing how agitated she gets, how unobservant she is about things. You have to have those kind of qualities to drive a car. Or you're sooner rather than later you're gonna fucking kill yourself or somebody else or both. Okay? It's inevitable. I'm actually sitting here hoping she gets hospitalized before she buys a car. Isn't that awful? It won't have anything to do with me. I'm gonna say that to Cheryl. I'm like, I'm gonna hope I hope my mother gets hospitalized. So you incompetent twits, all you so called professionals, you know, I'm gonna sit back and encourage her to be independent and now she's just gonna drive again. Fuck you all. Fuck you all. Especially the psychologist. She was hospitalized last month, dude. Just making it nonchalant. Hospitalized last month due to an unevenness in her medication. They're just conveniently forgetting her history. 35 years of on and off hospitalizations, okay? They're forgetting the recent last summer. Last summer when my aunt died. And then just most recently, just less than six months ago. I can't believe he wrote that letter because he likes her. And he, it, it, it's, uh, I'm just appalled. I'm going to write to Cheryl. I'm my online friends were appalled that you and Mary and, and my, especially my mom's psychologist, you know, you're going to sit back and pat her on the back while she just, you're going to just convince her. You're going to play right into her desire to believe she's now perfectly fine. She even said to me, don't call me mentally ill. I'm not mentally ill. You know, that's delusional delusional. I'm mentally ill, Mom, but you're not. And she's even said to me, but you don't take medication, Laura. She's even said to me, my psychologist says you belong on medication. My psychologist says you shouldn't yell at me. Unfucking believable And then today, what did I ever do to you? What didn't you do to me, Mom? What didn't you do to me? What did I ever do to you? Do you believe her? And you'd be like, oh, she's mentally ill, Laura. She's severely mentally ill, as Joe would say. Yeah. And the so-called professionals in her life are that fucking blind? Fuck you all. Fuck you. All of you. Okay? Unbelievable. It's unbelievable to me what that letter said. Studying my back straight. It, it's almost like a friend was writing it for her. With that letter, she's golden. No letter I write to the DMV is going to be worth shit if my mom waves that kind of letter around from her psychologist. <laughs> I don't fucking care anymore, you understand? Like I said, this existence has repeatedly, has repeatedly proven to me 
There's no point in caring. <laughs> no point in caring. Fucking bullshit professionals in my mom's life. Even Cheryl and Mary, you know. You know damn well that my mom's gushing about how she's going to be independent and buy a car and all this crap. You know she is. And they're sitting back and encouraging her. I know they are, because if they weren't, I'm sure she would be bitching about it, you know? So fuck them all. 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 I am so tired of this entire world treating me like I'm a little fucking tattling girl who doesn't know my own mother. I'm tired of it, okay? I'm walking away. way. And I'm going to sit back and wait for the day that will probably come sooner rather than later that I get that call. I'm going to tell Cheryl. I'm like, that's what I'm going to do. Everything I'm telling you, I'm going to tell her. And my conscience will be 100% clear. Okay? 100% clear because it was you all so-called professionals who allowed it to happen. Okay? End of fucking story.